Hello everyone, um, welcome back to Beacon Light. This is the first one of 2021. It is a little bit late. Have you seen 2021? Uh, I will not be accepting any blame for being a little bit inconsistent with updates on this. Um, so I'm Kess Beacon. I'm, this series is me going through old art and looking at it and explaining how I did things, why I made the choices I did, in the hopes that it helps other people with the sort of the hows and the whys of artistic technique and so on. So today we're going to be zooming in on colour, composition and painting and we're going to be using a painting that it's a year old but it is still my phone background, I still like it a lot. So what I've identified before as being the key thing that I need to have before I even start drawing is the what. What am I drawing? In this case, this is a randomly rolled alternate universe. Um, I have a generator uh, that features a young version of a character called Eska Cothonios, who in canon was the political representative of a underdog charity slash organ farm slash research institution slash street gang called the Anglerfish in a cyberpunk game. And long story short, it's that universe plus Mecha, because Mecha makes everything better. Um, so here we've got Eska, who is this young, scrappy Anglerfish operative, teaching the big corporate mechs that they ain't shit. So they're portrayed here as being small, nimble, unarmoured, unprotected, in comparison to this mech hand that is bigger than they are, to be honest, if you take into account the perspective. But the hand can't reach them in this corridor, and it's already been heavily damaged by exposure to Eska's um, corrosive acidic spit, which is quite mild in terms of anglerfish biological nonsense. Compositionally, uh, we've got Eska's head round about the third mark on both axes, and the other side isn't quite as well composed, but you still get this nice line from the words through the wheel to the head. Um, you're never going to be exactly on the money with rule of three composition, and to be honest, you probably shouldn't be. It's it's a guideline. All of these things are guidelines, and as you learn them, you will you will become better at playing fast and loose with them in ways that look cool. Um, the words, they were added quite late on in the process, because I realised that I had a lot of empty space here. Um, so, going th forward to the file, we've looked at the finished piece, now the file itself. Um, here's the original sketch, we can see that the composition is pretty much unchanged f from the final version, I've already got the basics down. Um, one other thing that I'll quickly note as an aside is that in this layers pane, usually my layers just are a load of layers. I'm terrible at naming them, I don't name them. In this instance, because it's quite a complex piece, I've highlighted the um, layers that show on the final piece in blue. Uh, Clip Studio Paint has quite a useful function here to do that. So I've got this sketch here, um, and then I move on to the second layer of sketch, which is actually up at the top, and that's because instead of drawing line art and then pulling the rest from the line art, in this instance I'm painting. So I want the sketch on the top so that I can see the lines even when I've put in a silhouette that I will be working from, that I will be using to limit where my paint goes. I do tend to use a lot of layers when I'm painting, and in some ways I think that's a problem, and in other ways it, it just really helps me to keep the colours separate. At this point, I will have had the colours in my head, and it's essentially two colours. It's the bright turquoise and the bright red, plus darker shadows, and it's a little bit of whitish colour as an accent. Um, so... We've got two light sources, and the one is the red light that comes off the mech's body from out of view, and the other is the turquoise, and that comes from the foreground. I did mean that for the white to just indicate metal. What I should have done with that, if I'd wanted that, I should have used a glow layer. But as it is, it kind of looks like there's an additional white light coming from above. That's okay, especially it gives this vaguely 80s vibe, which is kind of in place, but it isn't the point. So why these colours? Why have I chosen turquoise and red? Um, so the bright coloured lights, they invoke two things. The first of those is the futuristic tech, um, and the second is the colours of bioluminescent animals in the deep sea. And those often glow red or turquoise, and, I mean, anglerfish, you know. 
Um, and the other thing is that the red has connotations of danger in Western media, and that kind of implicitly villain codes the mech. So how have I done it? The first thing that I probably did um, is I probably started with drawing Eska themselves. So separate layer, we draw the silhouette, and then onto the silhouette we put these flat colours. This isn't how I usually work, this is quite unusual for me. Um, but I filled it in with this dark, this very greenish kind of a colour. Um, I'm going for this this undersea vibe for the turquoise coloured things, for the for the anglerfish stuff. Um, and then I've filled it, and then I've got this blend between the bright turquoise and the greener shadows so that I can pull the mid-tone colours out of that. Um, we've got these flat colours indicating the, the planes of the face and the body. And then helpfully, we've got the red rim lighting. And the thing about the red rim lighting is it lets me define the face. It stops it from getting lost in the in the shadows here, which is very useful. It's one of the things that's really handy about having light um, coming from two places. Uh, I'm quite lucky with regards to telling you how I did this because I do have a preserved layer from earlier on in the process that I haven't painted on. It's likely that I did the same with the hand. I don't have the earlier preserved version of the hand. Uh, we are just going to have to see it in its painted and rendered state. Um, but here, you know, it's a bit of a mess because I'm not very good at drawing mecha. Um, but I've got a lot of shapes and angles that I've jammed together and I've shaded with the blue coming from this direction and the red from this. And it's kind of worked out in the end anyway. The thing is that even if you've got a little bit sloppy with regards to form, if if you can make it look approximately right, you've still got something that's worth it. You've still got something that's quite good quality. But at this point, it is background time. And now my workflow has changed of late. Usually these days I do backgrounds first. Um, but th I think this is the order in which I did it. I'm just going to get rid of the sketches quickly so that we can really see what's going on. Um, there we go. First, we've got this dark floor. And this is lit with a very simple turquoise gradient. Like, I think this is just the gradient tool here. Um, it's not shaded in any way. Um, and then it goes from the turquoise to, again, this quite dark, quite greenish colour. And then on top of that, we've got a layer for the red floor. And you can see that I've gone through phases on this. We start here and come to this. And finally, this is the one that I settle on as being my final final one. Um, and that allows me to get this very stark separation between the turquoise and the red. And then we come to the wall. Um, and what we can see here is that originally it's just this dark shadow with, again, a turquoise gradient on it, um, with the silhouettes of the machinery coming up here. And then after that, I've painted in the blue highlights, and it's quite sloppy. At this point, I'm still using the um, oil paintbrush, which I've actually come to not like the way that pushes paint around these days. I do much prefer the gouache brushes for the way they blend. Um, but this isn't really going to matter because it's going to be out of focus. I'm not that worried about this being sloppy. Um, and then on this layer, we've got the text introduced. Now, what you just saw is that this layer is actually heavily masked, it has a heavy layer mask on it, uh, which is this thing. And I do that so that I can Gaussian blur this layer um, via the filters and then use the layer mask tool to obscure, to selectively obscure parts of it so that we've got this even shift from a blurred area in the foreground here to the sharp where the, where the wheel is, where the cables are. Let's get rid of this old version of Eska. So next up, I render the figure. Um, and this is, I'm using the oil paint brush to blend in that, that flat lighting that you saw on the earlier version. Um, we've got the brush strokes, which follow the contours of Eska's muscles. And they define those, and they define the folds of the t-shirt. We're very much 
flowing with the form here. Note how I've made sure that the split of lighting on the floor goes directly behind them. Um, the point here is that they are a dark and turquoise intrusion onto this solid, this all-consuming red. Eskers won this fight. Yes, they're intruding on the corpse territory. At this stage, so at this stage would have been when I was rendering the, the hand, but we've already seen that. So this stage is when I am pretty much done with the painting, but it still does look pretty flat. Um, so I've got a lot of effects and layers and other ingredients and other things added on to, to increase um, this piece. I don't know what order I did it in, so we're just going to look at it in whatever order it comes to me to look at. I've got, first I've got this, this texture layer. This is a, um, this is a picture of metal that I, I quite like. Um, it's sitting where it is in the layers pane because everything in this picture, except for Eska, I'll just add the spit in as well. That's also biological. Everything else is mechanical. Eska is biological. Um, and then on the top of everything, we've got this grain texture. And the grain texture is something that I made in Photoshop by taking a blank grey layer and applying the grain filter to it. And now I just dump it on the top of anything that I want as a soft light or an overlay layer to just add a bit of subtle interest to it. And then I've got a couple of extra layers with colour to transparent gradients on them. That's in the gradients pane here. Uh, you can see it here. And then, so there's the one of them that increases the turquoise light in the foreground. And then further down, we've got another one that increases the white light in the background, in the far corridor. Because by this point, I knew that I'd slightly messed up with the white highlights, and I figured I'd lean into it. At this point, it's quite blown out looking, it's quite overexposed. So I've used tone curve layers to darken it, and I've used them separately. So one of them goes on top of Eska themselves um, to, to deepen their colour. And then the other one goes on top of the background. And they then roughly agree. But I didn't want to screw with this layer, the overlay layer, and the, the spit layer as well. I just wanted to get Eska and then the backdrop. And thus we have a finished painting. This isn't classic colour work. I haven't paid any attention to the local colour of any of this. I've just drawn it in such bright, dominant lighting that we can't see whatever colour color, um, Eska's hair or the mech or any of it is. We can just see the lighting colour. Um, but it is a fun piece. Um, it got me pretty hubristic about lighting. So the next thing I tried to draw had eight light sources. That didn't work out quite so well. But this one came out nice. So I hope that's been interesting. I hope that's been informative. If you're enjoying these videos, um, please do like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, it, it does help, and it does, you know, give me impetus to keep going. Um, so I hope you're doing very well. I hope all of your projects are going great. And I hope that the next thing you draw is something that you still delight in a year later. Farewell.